right, so now let's look at how we determine the formula for an ionic compound. So there are four simple steps here. First, you want to find the charges of all your atoms. That's going to be on the periodic table, the 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, skip, 3 minus, 2 minus, 1 minus, zip. Then you're going to put the positive ion first and the negative ion second. Positive one's always first, negative one's always second. Then you're going to swap and drop superscripts to subscripts. So superscripts are the top numbers, subscripts are when they're on the bottom. And then if needed, you're going to reduce your subscripts to a whole number ratios. All right, so while we're on the topic, I just wanted to um, real quickly just go over something. All right, so, all right, so here's the element iron. Um, and I just want to point out that this right here, this is called a superscript. It's also the charge. So charge we write as superscripts. All right, now this, this right here, this too is a subscript. This tells us how many we have of that particular um, element within the compound, okay? All right, now, the next thing is that there are two types of ionic compounds. That's gonna be important in not only formula writing, but later on when we name. So there are binary, ionic compounds, which consist of only two elements, two elements only. And then there are ternary ionic compounds. Now, ternary ionic compounds consist of three or more elements, and that means that they definitely are going to contain what's called a polyatomic ion, which we'll talk about later on. Um, it's the sheet that's on the back of your periodic table as a whole list of them. But definitely, um, if you have three or more elements, it's ternary and it's a polyatomic ion is somewhere in that compound. All right, so let's look at some examples. So we want to find the uh, compound form between sulfur and aluminum. So remember that the uh, symbol for sulfur is, um, oops, got to turn my pen on. All right, is a S and the symbol for aluminum is AL. All right, now to determine, the first step is get their charges, right? Don't forget that to get their charge, okay? So just a little reminder um, as to where these charges are actually coming from. All right, so now remember the second rule is we want to put the positive one first. So we really want Al in the front and sulfur S in the back. Now this whole positive negative it no longer serves any purpose for us beyond this point because we've got them where they need to be. So now we're going to swap and drop the charges. So that two is going to go down here and the three is going to go there. So we're going to end up with Al2S3. That is the formula. Again, the positive and negative didn't come down because positive and negative only helps us put them in the right order. There's nothing to reduce, so there's your formula. All right, another example is magnesium and fluorine. So magnesium is Mg. Look on your chart. It's in the 2 plus column. And then fluorine is F, and it's in the 1 minus column. We've got them in the correct order. Positive 1 first, negative 1 second. Bless you, baby. All right, now we're going to swap and drop. So it's going to be Mg. One, and it's an understood one, right? So we don't write that, but you can if it helps you when you first start this process. You can write a one down there. F2, okay? So the two went to the F, the one went to the MG. So MG, F2, there's your formula. All right, last example is calcium and oxygen. Calcium is CA. It's in the two plus column. Oxygen is O, and it's in the two minus column. All right, now, these um, are already in the correct order, positive one first, negative one second, swap and drop. Okay, so these are moving, and we get Ca2O2. All right, now, in this case, you've got two and two, right? That's not the empirical formula, and you always want the empirical formula when you're dealing with a um, ionic compound. So these would both reduce, they would cancel to one and one. So the formula for CaO2 
um, calcium and oxygen is just CaO. Is you're gonna be looking at these the one plus two plus three plus skip three minus two minus one minus zip. We know that sulfur is located over here in the two minus column, and we know that aluminum is located in the three plus column. All right, now. Um, you may have noticed that we've only talked about the trends for um, these, the, the 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus skip, 3 minus 2 minus 1 minus sip. So what are we supposed to do when we have an element that's in this middle section or in the skip column? All right, so we don't have like an actual trend for those. Those kind of operate on a little bit different set of rules. So elements in the middle are known as transition metals. Uh, what that means is that most of them, the majority of them, are multivalent. Multivalent means that they can lose different numbers of electrons. So sometimes uh, iron might lose two electrons. Sometimes iron might lose three electrons. So how do you know how many electrons it's losing, which means the charge, right? How do we know the charge? All right, well, the charge is going to be identified um, through Roman numerals, okay? So you need to know your Roman numerals through four. So the only one that's kind of tricky is maybe four. It's this little IV symbol. Um, anything that has a Roman numeral in any, any of these elements in the middle or the skip with a Roman numeral, um, they're always going to be a metal, which means they're always going to have a positive charge, okay? So if I see something with a Roman numeral of 3, it's going to be a positive 3. That's what that means. All right, now with everything in chemistry, there's always going to be exceptions to any rule. So there are going to be three elements um, in the middle of the periodic table that I'm going to ask you to realize that are going to be exceptions for us. When I say they're exceptions, what I mean is that they exist in the middle of the periodic table, but they'll never have a Roman numeral associated with them. So you kind of have to know that they are not going to ever have a Roman numeral, and that's because they only have one charge. So there are three that we're going to deal with. There are actually more than three um, in the middle of the periodic table that only have one charge. But these are the three that we're primarily, primarily going to be dealing with. You don't have to memorize their charges because they're on the bottom of your polyatomic ion sheet. So if you flip your periodic table over, there's a polyatomic ion sheet in the bottom right corner is um, this little chart right here, and it tells you the charges. So basically what you need to know is that when you see, say, um, you know, zinc, you're going to have to know that it's not going to have a Roman numeral associated with it. So you have to go look on this chart and it's going to tell you that it's a two plus charge. They don't need a Roman numeral because they always have the same charge. Okay, so that was all about elements in the middle of the periodic table, also known as the transition metals. But what about the elements in the skip column? Because we didn't learn a um, trend for them either. We just skipped them, right? All right, so they operate the same way as the um, elements in the middle of the periodic table, the transition metals. So the metals in the skip column, so basically um, just these guys right here, okay, um, mainly tin and lead. They're going to be multivalent as well, which means we're going to need Roman numerals to tell us their charges also. All right, so let's look at some examples of these. All right, so it wants to know what C formula formed between sulfur. So sulfur is S2 minus based on its location on the periodic table. And then we have iron, and it says Roman numeral 2. So that means it's a 2 plus. Ooh, my pen got a little squirrely there. All right, so now we're going to swap and drop. Now, first off, before we can swap and drop, don't forget that you need the positive first, right? So it should be Fe2 plus and then your S2 minus, and when you swap and drop them, you get Fe2S2. Now, because they're both two, they would reduce to Fes. So that's our formula. All right, 
The next one says a uh, formula for lead. So lead is PB. And IV means four. And remember, all of them with Roman numerals are always positive. And then chlorine is Cl, one minus. Positives, one's already first, negative one second. So swap and drop, you get PBCl4. All right, lastly, we got zinc and chlorine. Zinc, Zn, it's in the middle, but guess what? It doesn't have a Roman numeral because it's one of those special three that we're going to deal with. So it is a two plus. And then chlorine is Cl, so it is a one minus. Then when you, they're already in the correct order, so then when you swap and drop them, it's ZnCl2. All right, so those were binary compounds. Now we're on to ternary ionic compounds. Ternary ionic compounds are composed of what's called a polyatomic ion. Um, polyatomic means many atoms, right? Ion means charged. So this is essentially a group of atoms that are covalently bonded together, but as a unit, they carry a charge. And because they carry a charge as a unit, they can bond in ionic bonds. All right, so here's the polyatomic ion list. Um, this is the ones that you are going to be dealing with um, for the most part. I did want to point a few out to you. All right, one thing I want you to note is that they're made up of uh, multiple atoms. Some of them have subscripts, and they all have a superscript or a charge that the whole thing together carries. There are also two that you might want to like star something. Um, ammonia, ammonium is one, and the other one is hydronium, and then the last one is mercury, Roman numeral one. All right, so please notice that all of these are positively charged. They're the only three positively charged polyatomics that you will come into contact with in this course. Um, because they're positive, they can be first in an ionic compound. The rest of them are negative, so most of the time you're going to deal with negative ones. Mercury 1 is, you might want to add another star there, is um, double special because not only is it positive, but it violates our Roman numeral rule. It says mercury 1, so you would think it's just HG1+, but in fact, it appears as a polyatomic, uh, what we refer to as a polyatomic. It's HG2 that together carries the charge of 2+. plus. Okay, so let's do some formula writing with these. All right, so what's the formula for the compound form between lithium and phosphate? So lithium is Li. It's in the 1 plus column. Phosphate is on the polyatomic list, so it's PO4, 3 minus. All right, so it's the same principle here. We still got positive and negative, positive first. And we're going to swap and drop these charges. Okay, same deal. We're still swapping and dropping these. Now, do not touch a subscript that is attached to a polyatomic. Do not move that. Do not take it away. Do not drop it. Add to it. You just leave it alone, okay? So Li is getting the 3 in this case. And then PO4 is just getting a 1, which remember, we don't really write 1s in formulas. Okay, so that's your formula. That 4 is still there. It didn't move at all. We still put the positive one first, and we still swapped and dropped those charges. All right, next we got zinc and acetate. Zinc is Zn. It's in the middle, but we're not given a Roman numeral. Um, remember, it's one of those special ones that has a 2 plus charge. It's on the bottom of your polyatomic sheet. And then we have acetate, which is C2H3. O2, and the charge is 1 minus. All right, so again, same thing. You're going to swap and drop these charges. Do not touch those subscripts. Leave them alone. So zinc is getting a 1, which we don't write. And then C2H3O2 is getting a 2. Now, to indicate that the 2 should go to the entire C2H3O2, you need to put parentheses. So you put that in parentheses and then put a 2. So basically, anytime a polyatomic gets a number 
swap to it other than one, you've got to put parentheses, okay? So that would be your formula. And last but not least, we have ammonium and cyanide. Ammonium is one of those special positive polyatomics, NH4, 1 plus. Cyanide is also a polyatomic, CN, 1 minus. And then you're going to swap and drop and end up with NH4, CN.